Welcome back to the channel. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Reality Dysfunction by Peter F. Hamilton. I got several versions here. This book came out in 1996. It's huge. It's part one of the um, trilogy, the Night's Dawn trilogy, book one of... I got this version here. This is the American version. This is the UK version. And then I've got these two paperbacks. So when they made mass markets, the, the books were so big, they split them into two smaller paperbacks. So I've got these two. Reality Dysfunction Part 1, Reality Dysfunction Part 2. You know, if I was ever going to have a rock and roll band, I think my band, I think the name of my band would be the Reality Dysfunction D-Y-S. I, 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 would, I would spell it funk with a K. Dysfunction. Get it? It'd be a badass band name. Anyway, let's talk about book one of Peter F. Hamilton's super huge Night's Dawn trilogy. Each book in the trilogy is as big as this. 1,200 pages, if not 1,400 pages. And they're just huge books. Don't ask me why I have so many different versions. I just do. I collect a lot of different versions of things. But anyway, what is it about? Normally review the covers. But well, we can review these covers. I've got three different... This one is a little bland. This one looks like a computer manual to me. It doesn't look like a science fiction book at all. This is the Orbit, USA Orbit version. Here is the UK Pan version, which I like. I like it. It's got this ship up here and the uh, swirling black hole, whatever it is there. And then the um, paperback versions, which were done by Warner Aspect, um... They're, they've got like, like little spaceships and stuff on the front. I can't like or dislike any of them. I guess if I was going to um, choose my favorite, it would be the UK version. My least favorite would probably be this one here that looks like a computer manual. I feel like I, I'm going to open it up and start um, you know, studying uh, how to code. We'll put that one over here out of the way. Anyway, let's talk about these books. Peter F. Hamilton's Night's Dawn trilogy is the biggest, hugest science fiction epic trilogy ever. I, I, I say it's bigger than Dune. And that's, and that's saying a lot. This, these books, all three books, are just comprised of some of the biggest ideas in science fiction. Not only that, but the biggest cast of characters. And if there's one thing that I kind of don't like about this, I love this series. Keep in mind, this is one of my top five favorite science fiction series of all time. However, there are so many characters. The books are so big, and there are so many characters that there just needs, in one of the versions, and none of these versions have it, there needs to be a character list somewhere so I can just keep everybody so I know which planet every character is on because this is a, a galaxy spanning epic science fiction. You know, this 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 series has everything from um, satanic death cults to sentient spaceships that are alive and can talk to their pilots to ghosts to raising of the dead to satanic rituals, I think I already got that, mobsters, it's got Al Capone and mobster type things, aliens, um, uh, confederate navy starships, alternate universes and alternate realities, serial killers, slave, uh, slave holders, slave planets, um, generation ships, uh, it's uh, really bad teenage girls that don't mind their parents, I mean this, and, 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 and this is generation ships, it's got, you know, I, I, hold, I brought a prop. It's the best one I could find. But there's a generation ship, which is huge. It's just enormous. And it spins. And so the inside is hollowed out. And all of the inside, like all the generation ships, is, is, is just a 
is 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 landscapes, mountains, rivers, uh, parks, homes, everything. But it's spinning so fast, everything's gravity. But then on the outside of it, so on the outside of it, it's got all these skyscrapers that stick out over it. So the people live in these skyscrapers on the outside, and then those are spinning. So imagine this roll of toilet paper with a billion little pins and needles sticking out of it like this and it's spinning like that and each one of those needles is a skyscraper of its own that's how big this ship is and it's zooming through it's zooming through space and it's got a ton of characters on it that you've got to keep track of and that's just maybe one fifth of the story takes place on this thing and and it's spinning and and, and so it's just huge uh the uh, queen of the starship of this and it's called um what is it called? Tranquility. This generation ship is called Tranquility, and it's just zooming through space, spinning like a bugger, keeping the gravity and all the all the skyscrapers on the outside. All the food and everything is grown on the inside, where the landscapes and water and everything is. And uh, Ione is the name of the queen and and the um, starship pilot. Uh, the kind of the rogue Han Solo character of this is named Joshua, and he kind of he kind of has his own little spaceship that he goes off and sort of um, digs for relics on old crashed spaceships and old planets that have been blown apart. And he goes and uh, so you know if a planet blows apart, like just think like in Star Wars when they blew up Alderaan, that thing went kaplooey and everything was scattered into space. Well. People probably went out there and scavenged all of that stuff for junk, you know? And so that's what Joshua does. He's kind of our Han Solo rogue character, and he does that. That's another side story. There's so many plot threads going on this. And we haven't even got to the mobsters and the ghosts and the serial killers yet, and the people that are coming back from the dead. Let me just read... Um, Oh, and then the sentient ships, the star, the void hawks, and the void hawks, and the uh, the captains, the people that pilot these ships that can speak to these ships that are alive. I mean, you remember uh, Battlestar Galactica with the Cylon ships that were alive and kind of had like organic chemistry to them and organic electronics inside. Remember when Starbuck crawled in there and she could play with the tendons uh, and muscles of the ship and get it to fly. That's what we're talking about. And that's just another fifth of this. I mean, this, this book, these books are just expansive, expansive. And then the, the starship, one of our great starships has got a crew. The one that we follow the most is called, um, it's a void hawk and it's called one -E Oh, it's O E N O N O E N O N E. That's the name of it. It's got a crew of six great characters. Um, there's caucus, um, Oxley, Reuben, Tala, Chi. I mean, there's a whole bunch of them. Tula, I think it's Tula, not Tala. Tala's a character in one of my books. Tula, and then that's the that's the sentient starships that are fighting each other. And then we've got the big generation ship. And then we've got people on planets. There's kind of like this work colony that's run by like these religious fanatics. And it's kind of like there's dog fighting there and there's like slaves there's serial killers running around there there's a girl one of my favorite characters is the girl the teenage girl that doesn't obey her parents and she goes off to all the dog fights they're not dog fights folks they're um alien creatures that the uh that, that fight they they it's a dog fighting cock fighting chicken fighting ring where everybody's there and they're not supposed to be doing it but they're doing it but they're not really using dogs they're using alien creatures little alien creatures and it's just kind of like kind of like the chess game on the millennium falcon that uh that um c-3po and chewbacca were playing but with real you get what i'm saying but um this girl she doesn't like they're on this work colony planet and she escapes every night from her house and goes out with these two serial killers you know you know you're a you know you're a you know you're a bad girl when you start dating the serial killers right and they take you to dog fighting alien little alien fighting uh you know illegal alien fighting matches anyway that's another thing that's going on and then uh and then we have that's and then and then on the on the work colony planet there's so many characters and so many characters keep showing up and up and up and it's just maddening to keep track of them that's the only thing that's kind of bringing this book down a little bit and harder to read because i don't have a character list and i can't keep track of who is doing what and to who but there's quinn dexter who's the serial killer guy and then his buddy uh jackson and then there's a uh, father horst who's the religious guy 
and there's the Ruth and her daughter Jay, and then the Skibbo family who has the the bad girl daughter, the teenage daughter that this goes out and watches the chicken alien fights and and where the you know the alien gorillas fight the alien ostriches or whatever it is. And then we've got the um, and then we got Darley and Nico and Lori who are the officials of this and Ralph and Jenny and they're all officials and Vorix. Vorix and his dog, there's a dog in here, and then Rosemary and her little son, um, Carl, and there's so many, so many characters and so many things. Let me just read. Before I let you go, I'm just going to say this is, and everything, it's so much action and adventure. So much, and so many big, huge ideas. Like I said, raising people from the dead, satanic cults mobsters and one of the in, in i've read the other two books and a little bit of a spoiler for the upcoming books they they start raising from the dead like some of our old gangsters from in anyway let me just before i give you my final uh score on this um let me just read the backs of these because they will give you a better idea of the story than i just gave you because i'm telling you these books are just hard to explain but once you start reading them, they are some of the funnest, most mind-blowing um, science fiction novels you'll ever read. But let me start with uh, the back of this one. It's, um, this is a spectacular, vast galactic saga. The reality dysfunction has won, won international claim. You know, it's as big as the Foundation series, big as Dune, big as Hyperion. First of all, Joshua Calvert, he's kind of our Han Solo character, owner of the Lady Macbeth, which is his sort of Millennium Falcon, is cursed by his good luck. Ione Saldana, Lord of uh, Ruin and the Queen of the um, Generation ship that I explained, like the toilet paper, um, is cursed by her royal birth. Colonists trapped on the stinking jungle world of Lalonde, Lalonde, these are the um, work, the work camp, these are the people in the work camp with the, where the serial killers and the people are raising people and the satanic cults, the people are getting raised from the dead and the teenage girls going out with the serial killers. So that's Lalonde. I, I just, anyway, call, okay, let me start over. Let me start this over. Joshua Calvert, owner of the Lady Macbeth, is cursed by his good luck. Ione Saldana, Lord of the Ruin, Queen of Tranquility, is cursed by her royal birth. Colonists, trapped on the stinking jungle world of Lolandi, are cursed by their faith. And entire planets in this galaxy are simply cursed. And a data chip from a long extinct alien race, the Laymill, holds the only clue to what the, phenom the cursed phenomenon is. It's a force unknown to science, an invasion unknown to history. The laymail call it the reality dysfunction. But others might call it hell. It is dominoes of the damned. A bizarre horror leapfrogs across the inhabited galaxy. An invading force that is part horde, part plague, part nightmare, and part prophecy. A deluge of entities able to possess minds, mutilate flesh, warp matter, disrupt energy, and mock both science and faith. But these invaders are not aliens. The reality dysfunction has opened a gate beyond life. And the damned are pouring through to conquer space and time. And that's what we kind of get at the end of this book and, the, and in the books two and three is the damned that are coming back. And it is all of the bad people throughout our world history are starting to be reborn into this reality dysfunction universe. The Night's Dawn Trilogy, book one, The Reality Dysfunction. If any of you guys have read this, you know I did a shitty job of explaining it. Because it's just one of those things like Malazan Book of the Fallen that you just can't explain in words. You just have to tell people, read, read it, read it. Because it is, like this says, it is science fiction on interstellar overdrive. I give this book one a 9.5 out of 10. I would give it a 10 out of 10 if they just would include a character list for the hundreds of characters that are in this. Other than that, man, I think everybody should be reading these. And we will review book two 
The Neutronium Alchemist, and then we will review book three, The Naked God, later on, probably a couple years from now. I usually, I mean, these are big books. It takes me a while to read them, so just give me some time.